our beautiful Midwestern day, Keller Lake in St. Paul, Minnesota, is the site of the final round of the Bud Water Ski Tour, the Bud Twin City Championships. Back in 1922, Ralph Samuelson invented the sport of water skiing not far from where we're standing on Keller Lake in suburban St. Paul, Minnesota. And one look at this crowd tells you everything you need to know about how popular it has become. Hello once again, everyone. I'm Bob Varsha, along with ESPN water skiing analyst Wayne Grimditch. Welcome to the final round of the Bud Water Ski Tour for 1992. Coming in, there were two very important titles at stake, Women's Slalom and the Mastercraft Pro Star Award, in which a $25,000 Mastercraft towboat would go to the high point skier of the year. One of those titles, Wayne, was decided early on. Another one is very much in doubt. Well, the one that was decided was the Women's Slalom title. Christy Over Overton took that by the virtue of her qualifying in the semifinal round. She has combined technique with a tremendous amount of power this season. Never finished worse than third except for one tournament in St. Louis, and she walks away with her first title ever. Now, in the overall standings for the outstanding event skier, Sammy Duvall and David Reinhardt are separated by five points. No one can afford a mistake this afternoon. Should Dave falter, Sammy and he will be tied, and it will go down to a bonus point situation. So we still have a lot of exciting competition left, even though most of the men's division titles are already decided. One of those titles that has been decided is men's slalom. We'll be back to meet the new champion when we return. to you by Mastercraft. Nothing else even comes close. See your nearest dealer for a test drive by Inmar, Inboard Power Technology, and by Toyota, reminding you to always buckle up. Do it for those who love you. Please take that thing out slowly and open it. You got some kind of device. We have a possible situation. Right. No, we have a situation here. Not a situation. Don't, don't, just don't just touch the button, button sir. Quiet, oh, please. It's just a car stereo. Pioneer car stereos offer you a detachable face for the ultimate in security. You see, it's a detachable face for the car stereo. What's the matter with these people? Are Finest subcomponent parts. Expert marinization. State of the art manufacturing. Corrosion protection at the subcomponent level. Two year limited warranty. At the heart, pure power. Inbar. Inboard power technology for the long run. There's just one, and there's no mistake in it. Why don't you and me do some fancy stuff in the night? She's a beautiful dancer. Why, I used to call her Twinkle Toe. Can you do this one? Ooh, that's just one. You're not so bad yourself. One calorie just for me. So for you. Thanks. So for me. on Keller Lake in St. Paul, Minnesota. The crowd is settling in, and we are ready for semifinal action in men's slalom. Here's a look at the weather conditions. It's very cool here, 72 degrees, although it feels a lot cooler down by the shoreline, mostly due to that gusting breeze, 8 to 12 miles an hour, and it's the direction as well as the strength that will challenge the skiers. Our semifinalists, the overall tour champion, Andy Mapples, skiing against Jeff Rogers, and Brett Thurley from Australia will ski against Wade Cox. There is Brett Thurley, known as Carrot for his red hair, former European and world champion and reigning tour champion, Andy Mapple. There is Stick, Jeff Rogers, and Wade Cox, winner of our most recent round in Indianapolis. A word on the rules, Wayne. Six buoy slalom course. It just takes about 16 seconds to go from the entrance gates to the exit gates. The skier tries to make all six, and they shorten the rope after he successfully does so. 
36 miles an hour. The boat speed as Jeff Rogers comes out of the water. A huge favorite in his hometown event at Camden, South Carolina, which he won for his first ever tour victory. Like many of the skiers on tour this year, this has been one of his best years. Really has proven himself as one of the top skiers in the elite of short line slalom. This is at 43 feet of tow rope. You can see how fast that boat is going. Before today's competition, Wayne and I hopped into one of the Mastercraft and took it out at 36 miles an hour. Believe me, folks, it is ripping across that water surface. Keep in mind that the skier will double the boat speed at the shorter line length, say a 37-foot rope length. This is Andy Mapple, newly crowned tour champion and a three-time winner in the seven events held thus far. These opening runs give the skiers a chance to check out the water conditions, the boat pull, how they're standing on their ski. And he gets down deep around number four, but well in control. He knows the water is a little choppy here. They'll have to work their knees to absorb the bumps and keep the ski steadily on edge. On the shore, perhaps a future champion checking out his equipment at something less than 36 miles an hour. I think he can handle it. Knowing that particular kid, I think he can as well. We shorten up now to 40 feet, and here comes South Carolina's Jeff Rogers. And he gets way over, coming into his offside a little late. Pretty good turn. He needs a good turn out of number three. He's got a little bit of a following wind, making it more difficult to slow the ski down, and just too late at number five. Four full buoys for Jeff Rogers, known as Stick on tour. Notice the ski around the buoy really moving a lot, causing some problems to get a quick turn. Comes into number two, gets a handle deep in the water, delays his turn. Look how narrow he is coming to number five and can't reach it. Boy, it looks fast even in slow motion. So four buoys at 40 feet will be the target that Andy Mapple is shooting for. Watch how Mapple works his knees coming into the buoy, extends, slows down, grabs a handle, accelerates across, needs a good turn on his onside, gets it, and he is outside of five. Oh, he kicks it out but that will advance him into the final. Four and a half buoys by one half buoy. The reigning tour champion advances. The man who is just an economy of motion, no matter whether he's late or early. Mapple, hand close to the handle, locks into a strong pulling position, works his knees flexibly firm, but then stays on the front just a little bit too long, and the fin won't stay in the water when you do that. Andy Mapple, who learned to ski in the Lake District of Northwestern England at the relatively advanced age of 13, when, believe it or not, he did not know how to swim. There on the shore, Jeff Rogers knows he's out of the competition. Now the second half of our bracket. This is Brett Thurley from Hobart, Australia. Brett is a very powerful left foot forward skier. Tremendous turns on buoys one, three, and five. He'll come into three here. Gets a quick turn down to the water, kind of like a Shea Lander slam dunk. A little slower on two and four. That's characteristic of a left foot forward skier. However, this year, Brett has improved his turns on his offside. Now that's a full pass at 40 feet of tow rope. Keep in mind, that is the rope length at which Andy Mapple fell. Now here is Wade Cox, winner twice on tour this year, including the most recent round at Indy. And clearly the second best slalom skier in the world, the Andy Mapple. Very tall and lean and has a great strength to weight ratio. Around number four, he's very quick off both sides, more equally balanced than a Brett Thurley. And he gets a full pass for his efforts. So at 40 feet of rope, both Wade Cox and Brett Thurley are still up. A look there at Wade Cox's new fiance on shore, watching her man in action. Now here comes Brett Thurley with the rope shortened to 37 feet. Notice how closely he turns to the back side of the buoy. Great job on number one. A little slower out of two, but he comes into his strong side, executes a quick turn. Wonderful run going, and then he just gets into trouble at the last second around number four. Too bad, because he really had it going. Three and a half buoys at 37 feet, I guess so. At this rope length, it looks like you could just reach out and touch the boat. Swinging 180 degrees up to the side of the boat to get around the buoy, accelerating across the wake up on the other side a full 180 degrees, and he just stumbles on some of the bumpy water. Nice view from our ESPN buoy cam. We'll be watching that later on today. Now here comes Wade Cox, who's got to get better than three and a half buoys at 37 feet of rope. This is a man who's been having a lot of fun in practice, and he comes to the tournament's mind refreshed and ready to turn it on. And he does a great job around three, very smooth and steady. He decides that's enough. I'm into the final. 
In fact, he is. It's his fifth consecutive final and his sixth in eight races this year. A pretty enviable record for Wade Cox. And we're going to see what has become a very classic matchup. The number two skier, Wade Cox, up against the number one skier in the world, Andy Maffel. Something that I think we'll see a lot of down the road. Oh, it's freezing, too. <laughs> freezing 75 degrees Wade Cox will head for the wetsuit locker he will meet the number one slalom skier in the world Andy Maffel when we return to St. Paul Minnesota and more of the Bud Water Ski Tour Nineteen ninety two has been a great year for your Indiana quality Buick dealers. Share of sales are up fifteen percent following a forty percent growth since nineteen eighty seven. Has there ever been a better time for you to switch to Buick? No. Why? Because this is the beginning of your Indiana quality Buick dealers ninety two model clearance sale. Inventories are up, selections are great, and stickers are reduced. All in celebration of another great Buick year. Presenting Digital Music Express, 30 channels of CD quality music for your stereo. No interruptions, no talk, ever. And DMX offers two great country channels, today's hits and traditional country with artists like Hank Williams and Patsy Cline. If you like music, you're going to love DMX. Digital Music Express, just call us today. A September to remember on ESPN. Lake in St. Paul, Minnesota. Time for the men's slalom final. Andy Mapple versus Wade Cox. You can see the size of the lake. It is very shallow, however, only about four or five feet deep on average, which causes the slalom ski to act kind of funny around the buoys. And some of the skiers have been having some problems. It's no surprise, though, that Mapple and Wade Cox, who know how to handle their slalom ski in all sorts of conditions, are in the final. Andy struggling a little bit here, but hanging on, not panicking, being very patient. You see him shaking his head. That's at 40 feet of rope. There is his son, Michael Christopher, and wife, Dina, on the shore. Dina looking a little bit nervous. Now here comes Wade Cox at 40 feet, a rope length he has already mastered once. And with, of course, the wetsuit on, trying to stay warm while the other skier takes his turn, Wade around the buoy, trying to gain a lot of angle at the turn and minimize the loss of angle through the wakes to stay ahead in the race from buoy to buoy. Nicely done. Very clean pass for Wade Cox. He is looking really tough today. A lot of folks holding their arms there. It is quite cool despite the lack of t-shirts on the shore. We shorten up now to 37 feet. Here comes Andy Mapple. And this is where the acceleration and deceleration is magnified. Very short line slalom. Mapple just pulling upwards of 700 pounds of pull on the rope, particularly right there late in a number five. Hits lots of bumps, crushes, and can't get to number six. Oh. And a bit of a flourish as the water conquers Andy Mapple. Five full buoys at 37 feet. Here's another look. Tries to slow down, grabs the handle here, and he breaks at the waist, loses all of his angle out of the turn, has to turn again, but it's too late at this boat speed and this short a line. We are at 37 feet of line length. Compare that, if you will, with Andy Mapple's tour and world records. The tour record, one buoy at 34 feet of line. The world record, three and a half buoys at 34. At 37 feet, here's Wade Cox. And down he goes. He loses the handle around the second buoy. And that's a huge surprise. He knew he needed to get all six. He had to have a good start. Came around number one. Fairly good start, nice pull, extends, gets outside the buoy, and then just brings it around just a little bit too much. And with that, Andy Mapple has his fourth victory in eight races. Son Michael Christopher loves it. Let's hear from Daddy. Well, Andy, it was really choppy out there, and you looked a little uncomfortable on your offside today. Yeah, I made a few changes, and obviously I made the wrong changes, and 
you know, head to head, you know, you don't really have a lot of time to change any things back. But, you know, I learned a lot. I kind of learned some things. You know, I feel fortunate. You know, once I got through that 35, I figured 38 into headwind was just, hey, if I go down, I go down. I just got to stay in. The ski stayed in pretty good, so. Well, it's been a little bit of an up and down year, as you mentioned to us in Indianapolis, but you've won half of the tournaments. You've won four events on the year. Uh, how do you look back on it? Yeah, um, it has been really up and down. I haven't been real happy with the way I ski. You know, I've had some great tournaments. I've had a lot of fun in some tournaments. But even my practice this year hasn't been where I want it to be. Physically, I feel like I'm you know, stronger. I've been doing pretty good. But just my practice this year, for some reason, hasn't been where... I felt real comfortable, and I've got to feel comfortable in practice to feel real comfortable in tournaments. Well, the rest of the field certainly hasn't been comfortable with your performances, but the audience has loved it. Congratulations again. Thanks, Wayne. Appreciate it. Thank you. And so the overall tour slalom champion finishes the year on a high note, winning over Wade Cox, Brett Burley, and Jeff Rogers. We'll return to beautiful St. Paul, Minnesota, with men's trick jumping and David Reinhardt making his run at the overall Tour Championship and that $25,000 Mastercraft Tobo. Stay with us for more on the Bud Water Ski Tour. I've been called a fanatic. But fanaticism and Mastercraft boats took me to four world overall championships and a world record. I'm still a fanatic, but now I've got a family and Mastercraft's new open bow, ProStar 205. It's got AWSA approved performance and room for my family. Mastercraft's new ProStar 205. The boat for fanatics. Hey, mommy. With family. We've just discovered an artifact used by Columbus himself on board the Nina. That's a mug from Long John Silver's. Just 99 cents with any meal. I have a complete set. We've just discovered a complete set of artifacts. Go fish, Long John Silver's. A couple of kids walked up to me and said, Billy Hatcher, can I have your autograph? <laughs> no. <laughs> you sure you're not Billy Hatcher? I said, I'm positive I'm not Billy. I never told him who I was, but I'm positive I'm not Billy Hatcher. <laughs> Throughout 1992 on the Bud Water Ski Tour, we've tried to give you an opportunity to remember water skiing as it used to be, Wayne. Back in 1966, Alan Kempton was the first ever to do this, a front flip on two skis. That was part of his trick run, at least in the United States competition. It was not allowed in international competition. However, he still won the Worlds in 1967 in tricks and also was the world jump champion. Well, nowadays, the man who embodies trick jumping is this man, David Reinhardt, known as the dog. His opponents today include Jeff Schmick, this man, Mike Toltzman, coming back from injuries, and Hank Amos, probably David Reinhardt's biggest competition this year. Freestyle is presented by SeaWorld. And folks, if you haven't seen freestyle jumping, you're not going to believe what these guys can do. The boat speed is constant, but will vary depending on the trick being attempted. The best two of three jumps will be scored on form, distance, and degree of difficulty. First man up, Hank Amos, the consistent number two on tour this year. Here's a look at his first two attempts. Well, he broke in form a little bit in the middle of that jump, bending his knees, but he stuck the landing once again. We've only seen him miss a landing once this season. Came back with the full twisting back Mobius once again. Another solid landing. And look at the score, 840 points on that trick. Now it's time for his third and final attempt, and Hank Amos is likely to try to blow it out on this jump. The double front, and he just is short once again, like he was in Indianapolis, of completing the rotation. He ends up with 1,500. To give you an idea of the difficulty of that trick as the Reinhardts look on, the double front is twice the degree of difficulty of the one ski back Mobius. It's a 12. Second highest rated jump in the repertoire of the freestyle jumpers. In case you're wondering why Dave Reinhardt's family was so happy as you look with Hank Amos, keep in mind the dog has a shot at that $25,000 boat. Now here comes Mike Tolsman, who suffered from an injury to his foot earlier this year. In fact, he's only been skiing for three days prior to this competition. Hard to believe that this guy had a broken foot just a week ago. Sailed to an outstanding opening leap of one ski back Moby. Came back with a 720 and just buries his head into the tip of the ski. 
Give Mike Doltzman credit. He has pulled out all the stops despite a little rust from lack of practice. Now here comes his third attempt. Tough and courageous. He tries a 720 again and another face plant. Goose eggs on the second and third jumps. Mike Doltzman will finish out of the money today, but he really went after it with this selection. Well, he had his head up at the start, and then he looked down, and when you do that, there's no way of finishing the 720. So Mike Toltzman gets wet for his efforts. And our next skier will be Jeff Schmick from Kissimmee, Florida. A look at his first two jumps. He didn't quite have the speed that we've seen in the past, but he had an Amos-like landing. 800 points was a great start for Jeff Schmick. Wrapped for his second jump but ended up springing a little bit too far forward and the rope pulls him out the front. So Jeff Schmidt gets about 700 degrees of that 720 and here is his must stick. A long distance one ski back flip, nice form, but it doesn't have a high degree of difficulty. He's over 1500 points, but that's not going to challenge the likes of a Reinhardt. It will put him into the lead, but you mentioned it, Wayne. We have yet to hear from the dog, and it'll be interesting to see what trick selection Dave Reinhardt comes up with. Mom and Dad on the shore, a little bit nervous. Here is the man who has won every round on tour this year but one. And Dave didn't get off to a good start, short on distance, had a rough landing, and ended up with less than 800 points on a one-ski back Mobius. Now with that, all Dave Reinhardt needed was 767 points to clinch the title. All he needed to do was stay up, but he went after it. He sure did. He was just four feet off the distance record. He got 850 points. That sealed the victory and also the Mastercraft. Mom and Dad proud on shore. Susie Duvall knows there's nothing husband Sammy can do when men's jump comes up later. Now this one is basically for gravy. Dave Reinhardt, let's see what he can do. Now that the pressure's off, looks like he's going to wrap for the 720, Wayne. Actually, he's wrapped for the same trick he just did on two skis, the full twisting front somersault. The position looks very bizarre because he has to clear his ski around the rope. Right at the top, he'll dive, twist, and flip all at the same time, and that is the best we've seen all season. He didn't need it, but he did it for the ground. With an exclamation point and a total close to 2,000 points, Dave Reinhardt leaves no doubt he is the freestyle master. And it's just incredible how Dave Reinhardt routinely, weekend after weekend, makes a very difficult and dangerous trick look so simple. Up and over and over that tow rope, as Wayne pointed out, Dave Reinhardt practices on a diving board at his home in Delray Beach, Florida. Here's how mom and dad Reinhardt reacted on the shore. Yes! Well, Dave Reinhardt has been the dominant skier on the tour this year, and we're going to add to it by making that incredible jump our Toyota Radical Maneuver. Congratulations, Dave Reinhardt from Toyota. I love what you do for me. Well, take a good look at the bionic man, ladies and gentlemen, the guy who seems to do everything on the water. Dave, uh, you got a big piece of luggage to carry around behind your car now, $25,000 Mastercraft. Yeah, I think they probably charged me extra for luggage on the plane, but... Uh... Uh, at least I can afford it now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it has been an un unbelievable year for you. I don't know how you're holding up. You're doing the knee and the ski boarding and the freestyle. Your freestyle round today is one of the best ever we've seen. Yeah, I'm real happy with my season this year. I cut back a lot of my practice. Normally, I try to practice every day that I'm home. And skiing mentally, I got burnt out. But this year, mentally and physically, I wasn't burnt out. Like, I'm looking forward to going home Tuesday to train again. And I've never been like that ever throughout the year. What do you look forward to in 93? Um, my goal every year was to win six of the eight, and I'd like to continue that. This year I won seven of the eight, so one up. Absolutely fantastic. Congratulations. Thanks, Wayne. And there is what Dave Reinhardt wins, a Mastercraft, complete with Inmar Power Plant, a boat that powers the Bud Water Ski Tour. David Reinhardt over Jeff Schmick, Hank Amos, and Mike Tolzman in the freestyle competition. The dog Reinhardt is the hardest working man in water skiing. In addition to his jumping skis, he also carries with him a knee board and a ski board, and now his own personal tow boat. We'll be back with more from St. Paul. What if you left all your worries behind? You grabbed the family, your skis, maybe a picnic lunch. What you'd have is freedom.
Introducing the Freedom Machines from Sea-Doo. Freedom! Freedom! For your nearest Sea-Doo watercraft dealer, check your local yellow pages or call toll-free 1-800-882-2900. Somehow, people have gotten the idea the new Toyota Paseo is a wildly exciting, sporty coupe. The Paseo is a practical, sensible car. Okay, so it has some muscle. And a low starting price could be a big turn-on. And sure, you're going to be instantly popular. That's no reason to do something impulsive. Think it over. The all-new Paseo. A very <laughs> practical car. From Toyota. We always thought we knew a lot about Bud. Great taste, king of beers, that kind of stuff. But these guys. Budweiser. It speaks wood aged. Whoa. Naturally carbonated. Takes a long time to brew. Where'd they learn this stuff? Some brewmaster information pipeline? Long forgotten, perhaps, deep in their collective subconscious? No, uh, I think it was on TV. Here comes the king, here comes the big number one. Michael Andretti could become the first driver in IndyCar history to win the Texaco Haviland 200 three times in a row. Can he do it? Find out Sunday afternoon at 1.30 Eastern, live on ESPN. Back on and under the waters of Keller Lake, you're watching the Sea-Doo watercraft in action. Actually, our buoy cameraman had better be careful. Keller Lake is stocked with pike and other muskelung, and the minimum legal catch is 36 inches. Reason alone to stay on your skis. Getting ready to hit her skis, the former woman's tour champion in slalom, Jennifer Leachman. Let's meet her up close. Part athlete, part model, a lady for all seasons. I've been involved uh, in sports since I was, I can't even remember. I've been water skiing since I was five, um, playing basketball since I was 12, running track, volleyball, snow skiing, and uh, golf very poorly, and my dad. Volleyball was my favorite sport and the one I was best at, but the scholarships when I was younger weren't as good, um, so I chose to go play basketball for Georgia Tech. Uh, played there for three years and kind of hung up the water skis because there was no professional circuit at that time. Um, and then when they started the professional tour, I dabbled with a few events, tied the world record, signed a few pro contracts, and decided I'd had enough basketball. <laughs> Well, not entirely. Now and again, the former Yellow Jacket will take to the court to remind husband Kelly Woolsey just why she made All-American in college ball. In your face! My husband Kelly has uh, actually been a great benefit to me. Um, he keeps me training those days when I don't want to do it. Um, he helps me lift that extra weight that I don't want to do. He was a professional baseball player himself, so he knows a lot about competing and concentration and, and what it takes to have a top performance. Of course, top performance means more than just working out. Jennifer enjoys working with her hands, and her home reflects her interests and her tastes. I do a lot of clinics tuning, tuning skis. I'm one of the only women, I think, that uh, does spin tuning. Um, and I also like to uh, make furniture and uh, reupholster, do wallpaper. Uh, and my latest adventure is uh, the mannequins that you'll see on the tour stops this year, um, displaying the Jeff Carrington t-shirt. Working with her fellow skiers to aid Jeff Carrington's rehabilitation is just one facet of Jennifer's life off the water. She has abundant reserves of energy, and she likes to stay busy. I think that any very happy person is someone who is well-rounded. Um, if, if you spend too much, part, too much of one part of your life on anything, um, something else will go by the wayside, and uh, you won't truly be happy. So, uh, yes, I'm very busy, busier than I like to be sometimes, but uh, I think that means ultimate happiness. In addition to Jennifer and Kelly, the family household in Central Florida includes the quiet companionship of Jennifer's three canines. My dogs are my babies, and everybody that uh, comes around the house knows they have pretty much free reign of everything, and 
It's just nice to have somebody to uh, mother a little bit and have them waiting there for you to, when you get home. And they don't care if I see Dad. There hasn't been much bad skiing lately for Jennifer Leachman. When we return, she will be in action in women's slalom. Stay with us. Receive up to 50% savings on all your water sports equipment in Bart's free water sports catalog. Skis, vests, wetsuits, gloves, ropes, and knee boards. Call 1-800-342-1700 for O'Brien, Kidder, Connolly, Joby, Body Glove, and other top brands. Call for your free Bart's water sports catalog and give us the name and address of a friend so they can share in the savings too. Call now, 1-800-342-1700. There's no mistaking it one. Why don't you and me do some fancy stuff in the night? Oh, with that cool, cool style of it, ooh. With that smile, yeah, one. She's a beautiful dancer. Why, I used to call her Twinkle Toe. Can you do this one? Ooh, that's just one. You're not so bad yourself. One calorie just for me. Some for you. Thanks. Some for me. Diet Coke. Just because you go all out, doesn't mean you gotta stink. Not if you're wearing this. And here comes your chance to prove it. And you will, because because Old Spice works. Man, does it work. The Spice wetness kills bacteria. The proof? Hey, hot shot. You're looking at her. <laughs> Old Spice antiperspirant for great odor protection. You demand proof, not promises. Open your coat, please. Take that thing out, slowly, and open it. You got some kind of device. We have a possible situation. No, no, no. Really? We have a situation here. Not a situation. Don't, 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 don't touch the button, sir. Quiet, please. It's just the car stereo. Pioneer car stereos offer you a detachable face for the ultimate in security. You see, it's a detachable face for the car stereo. What's the matter with these people? Are Back at Keller Lake in St. Paul, Minnesota, the wind has died down and conditions are improving as the action continues in the final round of the Bud Water Ski Tour for 1992. Bob Varsha and Wayne Grimditch with you. Wayne, a terrific come-from-behind performance by Dave the Dog Reinhardt to win that $25,000 towboat. Well, he is just incredible. Incredible throughout the season. The guy, I mean, I don't know how to explain it. He is just, he just has this uncanny consistency. We've still got action to come. Women's slalom and men's jump. What are you predicting? Well, women's slalom, Chrissy Overton, of course, has already won the overall title. She is very strong and has great technique to go along with it. She'd like to go out on a win. Now, Sammy Duvall similarly would like to go out on a win. However, he's trailing Bruce Neville. Neville jumped 204 in the qualifying round. Sammy last weekend went 208 for a new world record. He will take the gloves off and try to punch.